Hey, beautiful souls and creative minds. Welcome to The Artist Stoop, the podcast where we turn the art world into your personal playground. I'm Jillian Zapata, your host, and I can't wait to dive into the art world with you. Each episode, we'll be kicking it with an incredible artist, unraveling their stories and turning the spotlight on the magic that happens beyond the brush. Get ready to discover new perspectives, forge connections, and immerse yourself one captivating conversation at a time. So grab your favorite beverage, maybe a sketchbook, and let's jump into the kaleidoscope of creativity together. This is The Artist Stoop, where art isn't just a thing you see, it's an experience you feel. Welcome to The Artist Stoop, everyone. Today, we have the pleasure of introducing Michael James Cesaric, an emerging abstract artist hailing from Houston, Texas, and a remarkable journey that began during COVID pandemic in 2020, Michael swiftly captivated the art world with his large scale hyper minimalistic creations. His work characterized by bold color blocks and meticulously placed accents have garnered recognition from esteemed publications and institutions like Vanity Fair, Tatler, and the University of Texas at Austin. Recently, Michael unveiled his latest collection, Intention, available through his representation in Austin, Texas, with another eagerly anticipated collection on the horizon. We'll have to dive into that one. Additionally, he has been selected as one of only 35 artists from 14 countries to be featured in the upcoming issue of Friend of the Artist, where his unique background and work will be showcased in a dedicated four-page spread. So welcome, Michael, to the Artist Stoop. Thank you. Thanks, Jillian. Yeah, excited to be here. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah, I, that's actually, there's a lot going on there. Um, yeah. And I think yeah. our paths have, I think our paths have actually crossed. And I want to say that I actually have met you before. Hey. I know and when, when I was going through your website and I was going through your bio and stuff, did you show at the other art fair? I did. I did. What, was um, it in the fall of 21? October of 21? So it was, I think it was in the spring of, of 21. 21. So um, so we may have just missed each other unless, um, I you think know. I think I went the... to that fair, like just okay, to go walk go. around and see. So it's very possible that I have actually like walked up and you guys, yeah. oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's great. Yeah, I mean, the other art fair was was awesome. Great exposure. And that was like my first real exposure event, first fair, first public showing ever. So that was, you know, quite a, quite a feat. <laughs> It is. And, you know, it's funny when you like what the audience doesn't always understand is like when we do a fair as, as artists, it's one, you have to pay for your booth to be there. Someone's not like, oh, come show your work. You have to right. pay a substantial amount to be there to showcase your work. Right. That's first and foremost. And then second, it's like. You have to organize everything yourself, get everything, figure out how you want to lay out your booth, how you want to display your art, um, if you're going to choose to sell prints, if not, you know, um, how much you're going to do it, how you're actually going yeah. to hang your artwork so that it looks like the most appealing to everyone. And then it's four days of being on your feet, talking to people right. nonstop. <laughs> Yes, it's um, it's very grueling. Um, not just um, physically from you know hanging, getting everything ready, hanging all your art, but um, standing up and being you know socially on for you know five days, talking to people, educating them about yourself, repeating the same things. It's it can be exhausting, um, but it's a you know it's a great network an opportunity, and it, it was a success um, that led to a lot of other things. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, and the other thing I just want to point out, like with that, um, the being on, and sometimes like for us artists, we're introverts. We want to be hiding in yes. our studio. For, <laughs> so for us to be on, you know, for that many yes. days in a row, it's like afterwards or when you're driving home or back to the hotel, you're like, I just need peace and quiet. Yes, exactly. I need my time alone. And um, it's funny you say that because I think on social media where a lot of people have stumbled across my art, I come across very bubbly and open and because I'm always sharing content. But 
behind the scenes is very much not that and it's very <laughs> private very quiet and um so it's funny when people meet me out about or um ask like uh what i like to do in my spare time and usually it's very boring <laughs> in painting alone and in, in my studio apartment so it's it's funny how you know artists can relate to that it's it's it can be very challenging but i think through time you kind of learn to force yourself out of your boundaries to be able to tell your story and i think you'll agree it's 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 hard to get a full story of an artist just looking at their art there's so much more underneath and when people can connect with that it makes them you know want your art even more and it helps make the connection so even just from a marketing perspective like it's always good to tell your story and you know show people who you are who's actually painting the paintings behind what they're seeing and and it, it can be very difficult though it always is for me but um it's gotten easier through time <laughs> it takes a lot of practice yes 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 definitely and that's why i have created the artist stoop for that there you particular go yeah reason yeah. you know um i it's funny because i actually had this idea 10 years ago like i had the name and the oh, idea wow. for the artist too 10 years ago and i bought the domain for it and i was just like i want to be able to go and and at the time when i first had the idea for it it was good, just going to be like a magazine or a blog or something and then you know sure. as time has gone on blogs i mean podcasts and video podcasts it's like okay people need to see the artist like we need to have like real conversations and yeah, be able yeah. to do it so I think it's very interesting because this has come up so many times in like me doing research with other artists, artists becoming artists during the pandemic. What happened for you during 2020 that all of a sudden you're like, I'm an artist. <laughs> so the weirdest thing happened. Um, I was finishing my MBA, very okay. opposite of art. And um, all of a sudden, you finish school, you have a lot of time on your hands. And I had just moved into a new apartment that had just a lot of stark, high, white walls. And I'm in, and I was like, you know, I want to make this my own. I want to bring in art. And at the time, one of my friends um, actually studied art at uh, my undergraduate at University of Texas. And uh, she had these beautiful paintings in her apartment. And so I had paid her to commission a painting for me. And after that, I was like, you know, like maybe I could try it. And so she kind of directed me generally, you know, this type of canvas, this paint, just kind of, you know, mess around. Worst mm -hmm. comes worse, you waste a canvas and you learn you can't do it. And, um, you know, it's kind of it started as simply as that. And I, I really liked it. I liked it. Um, that as an outlet and it was fun it was relaxing i would come home from work and do that and uh found myself pouring more and more time into it and then after a few months you know friends started asking for them and so i started you know doing it at cost and just saying hey like i'll sure like i want to paint anyway what, what colors do you want and then quickly it started growing so fast i was like wow like i can i can start doing this as like a job essentially like i could be a real artist like what is this i didn't know i had this you know underlying talent per se i didn't know i could do this and um so i think at, about six months later that's when i started taking it a little more seriously so entering 2022 yeah. and um then it just snowballed and um led to the other art fair that was my first fair i told you about and then uh, my first gallery representation in austin and then from that um, just through word of mouth, social media, um, mm -hmm. and Instagram is, I've learned to be very powerful. A lot, a lot of people reach out, um, even designers directly for work. And then, yeah. you know, we coordinate all the details elsewhere, but it's amazing. The, uh, vast footprint you can gather through social media and, uh, people that don't even know you feel like you, they know you, I know them. It's, it's, it's a bizarre relationship, but, um, it's a new age of the emerging artist and um i tell people to push social media hard if you're a new artist and want your name out there because all it takes is a friend of a friend of a friend or a recommendation to follow someone and you can be discovered and um it's it's been miraculous for what's come from that 
That's awesome. And I have a confession to make. I, <laughs> I did find, obviously, I think I remember meeting you at the other art fair, but wow. I did find you on Instagram. I don't remember, you know, some channel of wherever, like you might've been following someone else or, and I was like, oh, this person's art looks interesting. I actually was like, how did he get so many followers and all this that I actually started almost Instagram stalking you and like watching <laughs> what you were doing. I was like, okay, what can I mimic? what he's yeah, no, doing yeah. that could work for yeah. myself <laughs> yeah it's all i do um i'm in very transparent with everyone like i do a lot of instagram targeted ads um oh, it's somewhat helpful it kind of it depends a lot of times you find other artists like yourself and then yeah. sometimes you find people that just are diehard art fans and then you find designers and so it doesn't always work uh but I tell people, uh, you know, the cost of an ad is if you get one point of contact that it could be, you know, translated into a tangible business idea, like after even a full month, it yeah. pays out. So, well, that's good um, to know. yeah, yeah. And like, uh, there's, it's probably, if I had to guess on my account, 50% artists followings and then 50% uh, clients or, or friends of clients or designers and that kind of stuff. So um i think it's great to cross pollinate i'm all about yeah. supporting the artists and um i think generally artists feel the same way they all creatives i think are drawn to this collaborative environment and um many people don't realize like even inadvertently like that can lead to a big big business opportunity for everyone involved and so it's it is very funny um looking back through time of how instagram has been a uh a huge proponent of my you no know, quote unquote art career per se. Yeah. I always say collaboration over competition. Yeah, yeah. I mean, art is the first industry that I feel like is, in a sense, while it is competitive in some means on getting you know a representation or something, mm -hmm. it's everyone's product is so different that mm -hmm. you kind of are forced to be collaborative and not competitive, like. Yeah. Um, in a sense, like I want to be in galleries with artists that have work drastically different from mine, a lot of different um, options. So someone that wouldn't normally think of my type of art sees it from someone else. You just never know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's interesting seeing other artists, you know, lift everyone up. It's it's a, an amazing um, experience. Yeah, because because I also come from like an interior design standpoint. So um I always say, like, I know my art is not for everyone, but I have right. enough artist friends that if someone's like, oh, well, okay, I'll go buy something from, you know, the store. And I go, oh, okay, hold on. Stop. Before you do that, let me reach out to my artist friends or let me show you some of my artist friends and see if something of theirs actually works for you. And like, instead of just going to Target or Ikea and buying that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've done the same. And um, people have asked me, I mean, through the years, I don't really do commissions as much anymore just because um, I feel like I'm at a point where I can create really what I love to create. And at this point, people know what avenue I'm going down mm -hmm. and people that are interested like it, they can buy it. People that don't like it, they know by now and they can go to someone else. But yeah. um, people that come to me asking for something that I don't personally feel comfortable with, I don't think I'm good at doing what they want or does it fit within my trajectory as an artist. I can connect them with someone else and like, yeah. why wouldn't you? And so mm -hmm. it's a really, really interesting industry where everyone's collaborative and um, supportive of each other. It's, it's, it really is remarkable. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. Yeah. So what is your avenue? What is your art about? <laughs> so I like to think, um, my art is primarily residential. So think, you know, a, a family designing a house. Um, a lot of my paintings go to houses that designers have assisted with those families um, in doing color schemes and sourcing materials. And um, I think most of my paintings have a pretty neutral component. One of the I, know. The one I actually me. really like that one. Yeah. That one has not been released yet. So it's a Ooh. surprise. And so that'll be released hopefully within the next month. But, um, most of the paintings are very neutral color. They can go practically anywhere, but uh, most of my clients that I've seen have a pretty um, just neutral, minimalistic uh, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I've noticed kind of trend through time is a lot of people with more traditional or even European 
rustic tastes are now taking on abstract art, which I love. I think it pairs perfectly and makes it a oh, bit yeah. of contemporary and a bit of traditional um, architecture. Like I think it works great. It's a good complement and contrast at the same time. Um, so I, it's a wide range, but most of the people that I think are, um, you know, purchasing from me or I'm targeting are, you know, people that, you know, understand art, understand abstract art. Um, they understand that they're not supposed, and I think we'll get into this later. They're not really supposed to see something as they are supposed to feel something from art. Um, yeah. that's why I started painting and that's why I love it. And so you know, when you are kind of pairing yourself with this client in a sense, you can kind of see the trajectory of where you need to be going. And um, I think as long as I continue to produce paintings that, you know, have a bit of me in them, a bit of emotion in them, and people can connect to them, then I'm doing my job and hopefully other people are happy on the other end. <laughs> no, that's that's the ultimate goal for every artist, you know, that they do that whoever owns it ends up finding their own emotion attached to it, right. you know? Um, yeah. So movement is really, yes. really big. I know you like to most, from what I could tell, like a lot of bigger paintings. So movement yes. is a super, super key part of your work. Is there an, an underlying theme or story or how do you, how do you come about like with your movement and your process? Yeah. It, I mean, it really stems from, that element of emotion and i think movement can be something that can spur something positive but also negative kind of seemingly turbulent and so um a lot of my paintings uh some of them come across very moody and then some of them come across very uplifting with lighter brighter colors um and uh, yeah so it's it's the movement piece is key i think a lot of people from by now can kind of recognize a painting that would be mine because it has a lot of what i call like squiggles and spirals on different lines different directions and uh through that i feel like you can foster emotions to the person viewing it and when i pair that with a title that i think is captivating which was you know capturing my emotions at the time or kind of what i would imagine someone feeling then with that and the color palette and the tones and all of it, it kind of ties together the, the, the perfect element. And so, so, but movement to your point is a huge, huge part of that. Yes. And it's, and it's definitely very, very recognizable. Like when I see, when I'm scrolling, I, if I didn't see like the name, like of who it was and I see a painting, if you just posted a painting, I know it's your work because yeah. you have like the more like the background color, but then your mark your markings are very, very distinct. Yeah. Yeah. And... I think that's the thing that everyone should try to try to make a more can make your work distinctive. And so people recognize it. And, um, obviously very early in my art career per se, but, um, I love it when that happens, when someone sees it, it's like, is that, is that yours? And, um, it just makes my day that people recognize it and, and can translate something a concept or just a gener generic design back to me yeah um and i think that's really important to continue to grow so people can have an element uh, that they can you know stay attached to even as your career evolves yeah and you and then over time also like it doesn't have to stay the same you're allowed right. to grow and play and and try right. new things new textures new pe you know um new mediums um and that's yeah. like one of the really cool things I think about being an artist. Um, because like right now, you know, I always think of it the best way that I like to sometimes explain this to someone who isn't an artist. I was like, think of a musician. Like I always use the Beatles as a, like the perfect example. Their yeah. early albums were like super poppy, you know, whatever. And where they started, like with the Beatles and the White Album are almost like yeah. two completely separate different artists. <laughs> And yes. it's just like, it takes time and you just go through these chapters and that's how, you know, even us as artists who paint, we don't rinse and repeat the same, um, every time we start painting, like it's, it's a new yeah. concept. So right. I do want to dive in, um, something that you said just in your bio, I want to know more about your collection that you just released, the intentions titled intentions yeah yeah let's dive so, in, you can dive into the individual pieces how you came up with that name 
Yeah. Tell us. Um, so one thing I wanted to start doing um, are collections of pieces. Mm -hmm. um, I think it has an element of exclusivity to it, but it also adds an element of cohesiveness across multiple pieces. Um, so someone could even buy a few pieces from the collection and it, it's cohesive across those and they're not too different, but there's elements within them that are just different enough that you could, you could put the whole collection in your house and you, you wouldn't feel overgrowth. Um, but the collection, um, I, I call it intention, um, because it's supposed to represent the, it's kind of a double-edged meaning. It's, it's one each artist, I think, has an intent going into a painting of what they want to see, but at the same time, that intention changes as more elements are combined. And a lot of times when you finish a painting, it does not look like something that you started with. Um, and this collection in particular um, has some stark space on the canvas, something I don't normally do, which is supposed to represent, you know, what's to come and the intention of this collection building on others and future collections building on this, you know, first big canvas collection. This is the first collection I've done that's been um, this really canvas based in this many pieces and before it was just paper collections the intention is really really cool it's all neutral palettes uh pops of blues in some pieces but mostly beiges reds i don't usually work with red so that was an experimental process um greens browns it's they're really really pretty and um they're honestly more soft than even like the work behind me there there's less um you know small distinct movements but bigger larger movements that are are more cohesive with you know larger pieces and so i think you know w w when people see it um they'll see a slight departure of what they're used to seeing but there's still elements in those pieces that are tied um so I, I think there's you know seven pieces with that collection and they're all exclusively available with my representation and austin adams galleries and so I think um, those were available about a month ago or three weeks ago. So um, okay. got a really positive reaction so far. And so hopefully, hopefully it turns out well. You, you never know when creating these things, you have all these ideas and, and things in your head that it would pair with. Uh, so, so hopefully people react well to it. So far, it's been positive feedback. So fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, it sounds amazing. Obviously, I don't have you have you posted some of the photos on your I have. I have. Okay, I probably um, have seen it. I'm just so missing. all the pieces are out there. They're all online. Um, I believe on Instagram, they're they've all been posted um, at least collectively together, okay. but I, a lot individually. And so, okay. um, all the all the pieces of intention in, are really special to me, and they have a lot of varying titles. But um, if you take all these pieces across this collection and blend them together it just ties a really just great story from you know the intent of wanting to be an artist creating through the process of frustrations but the triumphs it's it's um it's a it's a great story so i hope i hope everyone can connect to at least one piece what are some of the titles so one of them um it's entitled for when we're older huh? and you can take that on many different ways, but mm -hmm. essentially the intent, huh? Intention <laughs> behind that piece is, um, you know, capturing something you want when you or we are older as a society, as people, as um, relationship, whatever you choose to relate it to. But you look at this piece and there's both darker moody parts, but also light coming through and there's a translucent effect that seems like lights you know peeking through there's new beginnings and the kind of feeling i wanted to foster when doing it is that people see kind of a future in that piece and um hopefully that can help connect uh you know the viewer to themselves or what they want from themselves in the future um and each of the pieces are kind of kind of like that so similar similar concepts that's that's awesome and i love that there's a, a story because that's you know that's the whole point of you know doing this podcast and you know interviewing artists is because those little nuanced stories are truly 
truly what connect, you know, the collectors to the artists that they can find that little right. bit of themselves. And, you know, I know how fantastical my brain is and the stories that go on before my paintings <laughs> after and whatnot. Yeah. So it's like when I get to hear another artist who actually dives that deep into it and it's just like, yes, I'm not the only crazy yeah. person out there. <laughs> No, no. I think it's, um, I think a lot of, I think, um, there's a few things on a few levels. One, I think abstract artists, um, don't fully appreciate, they understand what they feel, but it's hard to translate that to other people. And so that's why you see a lot of abstract art that's literally untitled or untitled number six. And people just kind of take it and they go, okay, what do I feel when I look at it? But if yeah. you name the piece, it helps connect people to why you put that color there, why it's this shade of blue, why is it dark and cloudy over here? And mm -hmm. they can see something and feel something rather than literally seeing an object. Yeah. Um, and I think that is so key in um, creating art for sale. I, I, I think it's um, very, very important, especially for people that are new to abstract art that can kind of help teach them in a sense on what your intent is in, in creating it. 100% agree. Um, mm -hmm. Let's dive into your color palette. So you said it's, so either grays, neutrals, um, how do you go about picking your color palette? Because before, you know, you were doing now one offs, but now like this time right. you're doing collections. So how does that process look for you and getting a color palette ready for a piece. Yeah, you're exactly right. So when I first started, the color palette was wild. It was all over the place. It was fun, but it was everything from black to red to pink to green to blue. Like you really couldn't tie any of the pieces together. Um, my preference just personally on colors are neutral colors just because I find them calming. They can go in any space. Um, since I'm painting constantly, art's often hanging in my apartment and that's what I find peaceful. So it kind of inadvertently ends up that way. Mm -hmm. um, granted, it does depend on the client, but usually to my earlier point, people by now kind of know what direction I'm going to be painting and know if something's going to be in my comfort zone or not. Um, a lot of the color palettes are what I said, neutral. So think blacks, grays, tans, browns, maybe even some you know sage greens but nothing really too stark um if there is a stark element like a bright blue or a red it's usually nestled in a sense where there's a translucent kind of layer over that or a nice complement to kind of soften the bluntness of that color mm. um i mean the, the painting behind me has yellow like bright yellow in it but it's been layered so many times to other colors that it softens it I and see. so yeah, and so a lot of the paintings have this kind of smoky, as I said, translucent layer over everything, um, which is just basically captured by watering down the viscosity of paints, and it just makes this really, really soft um, overlying layer that helps soften everything. And yeah. um, I've found that I like it, other people like it, and so that's something that I've I've uh, stayed with. Nice. It's 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 always nice when you do have you know, it, when you add those pops of color, even if it's just like you literally like sticking your arm out and just going, you know, yeah. but it's literally what you, th there's no rhyme or reason people. When we add color sometimes to a spot, it's like, mm, I think I need something right there. And you just take your brush yeah. and you just go, and it's like, and it's usually like a smaller brush. So it's not an aggressive wisp right. to it. Yeah. No, <laughs> I've, the best um... way I can explain like what happens in the studio when we add those pops and wisps of yeah, color yeah it's, it happens just like that <laughs> uh, and I, I mean and i've had some clients that um you know do not like certain colors and so those are specifically excluded from the piece but um usually you'd be surprised and you'll agree julia and then your own uh you know art that there's a lot of colors within one piece like even if you didn't even think that piece would have that color and i would I, I mean, there's some pieces that I've done that are really, really dark, but in reality, they include some oranges and reds underneath, even though it comes across as overall very dark, like blacks and grays. And so people, I think, 
have a conception in their head of what colors they do not like because they're used to seeing them a certain way. Mm -hmm. But when presented with a complementary um, element or color palette or tone, that can easily be changed. And yeah. I've seen a lot of clients, um, <laughs> I've inadvertently pushed them to see other ways and viewing colors together. And when it comes across, um, they are very pleasantly surprised on how, you know, a red can work well with a blue when, you know, done like very lightly and delicately. Um, and it's it can... not just like a primary color thrown in your face. Yes. Right. Yeah. I think when people like, I personally do not like red. And, but when I think of red, I think of a block of red. In my paintings, red is not quote unquote a block. Red it is a slight sheet like smear um, among some blue or some gray or some neutral colors to kind of bring out a more rust element. It's not a bright red, you know, circle in your face. Um, so it's it's much more calming than that. And so I I kind of I I, I do stri uh, strive to make people kind of pull out of their comfort zone a little bit and kind of see how different colors can interact because um, in the right space, it can, it can, you know, do wonders. I, yes, because from an interior design standpoint, you know, it's amazing how like even in fabrics or textures or patterns or even like in the clothes that you wear, sometimes you don't realize that there are little colors in there like, oh, maybe I do kind of like that color. Yeah, oh, yeah, no. yeah. And I think to that end, um, Designers, you know, depending on who it is, often send color swatches or palettes via mail just to make sure I have the exact color. But I said, you know, personally, I find it um, great if you can do a complementary color to that rather than matching. You don't want to come off as if you're matching every single thing in the house. Um, in my opinion, I think it works well if you can build something complementary to what your existing, you know, design is your whatever whether it be your couch or the wall color or you know a certain texture in the wood floors or you know an element you want to match i think it's great to complement rather than match everyone's different obviously i've done both um but uh yeah i think to, to our you know earlier point people will be surprised how good colors can be when paired you know in, in a certain way Yes. And like one of my favorite things that, you know, obviously when I've done the few commissions that I've had, you know, I always have, I do have, that's one of my favorite questions is those like, what colors do you absolutely hate and what colors yes. do you like? But then I always, you know, maybe next time you do a commission, I always try to get to know their personality. Yeah. And do definitely. like more of a, like an inside out, like, okay, I want to know who you are and I want to try and make this painting be an extension of who you are, whether you realize that that color and that little nuance about you, I want to bring that out as well to also not try and, like you said, be too matchy matchy to the interior right. of everything else that's going on because you are trying to, you're, you are creating something super special that's just unique for them. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And I'm always very um, adamant. I think the art should stand alone by itself. Um, while it is meant to complement and supplement the interior, I kind of believe it should be a focal point. And regardless of where it is, you should like it. And so, um, you know, it's it definitely is a collaborative process working with clients and designers and, you know, potential buyers to make sure we both understand each other, what our capabilities are, what we're looking for. Um, I mean, I, I just did a piece recently for uh, a client in Houston who um, is in the process of building a new home, uh, a young couple that just got married and think kind of a Napa farmhouse modern vibe. The only hard part is the house was being built. But they wanted a piece done when they moved in. And so we were going off of renderings and, uh, you know, pictures of samples rather than the actual samples, which is very different. Yes. Um, and I wanted to fully understand where I was going in the house, what the light looked like, what was going to be in the room, what was what were the finishes in the room. Um, one interesting concept where the walls were actually, actually in the oak, not like a color, not a paint color. So that was a huge thing to ask for this particular painting it was it, so we went a, a tad darker to really make a stark contrast as the white oak walls but you know that's something that you wouldn't really know you gotta know what questions to ask and 
want to fully understand the space in your head of where it's going to make sure you can complement it well. Yeah, that's it, it's a very unique quality for you as an artist to be able to, I don't want to say put your ego aside, but at the same time, it's just like, okay, I have to make this work for everyone and in order for them to get the best version of it instead of saying, nope. They asked me to do commission and they asked me to, and I'm going to do what I want. You know, like that's huge as an artist to be able to, to get to that point, to ask those questions. Yeah. It's challenging at times, but, um, you know, all clients are different and, um, have different time frames, different things they want. But, um, I think which what I said earlier, people kind of at least know kind of how I work now. And, um, I, Every client I've had thus far has been great, regardless if they're very detail oriented or detached from the process. Um, we find a little, you know, no point in meeting ground. Nice. So you have a new collection coming out. Yes. The, the collection that no one knows anything about. Yeah. The secret, <laughs> secret collection. Um, yes. Can you talk about it? I can talk a little bit about it. Um, okay. So I will tell you a few things that are still secret. So I haven't said where it's going to be. Oh, so it's okay. not going to be at a location that art of mine currently is at, which is super exciting for me. So I'm um, thinking it's going to be in a foreign country or a different state. Uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> it has to be outside of Texas, <laughs> but, um, it's, uh, very large scale works. It's they're all neutral. Um, the one behind me is actually included in that collection. You can't see the full piece, but you kind of get the idea. Why are you teasing um, us like that? That's me. I know, I, but people that are following me know I love to tease them. I love to hint at things coming without giving any details. <laughs> People make fun of me, but um, I think it ironically can kind of create a hype and, and wanting to know, you know, what, what's coming. Um, but this will be, um, you know, following intention, the second collection I've ever done on canvas. Um, it's called Odyssey. Oh. Uh, intentionally, you know, with the uh, description of a journey, whether that be an art, artist journey, a physical journey to another place, people know. Um, can be a uh, double meaning. So I immediately um, just thought of Homer's Odyssey, which is, you know, ups and downs, yeah. and there's a lot yeah. that goes on. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot that goes on. And uh, the pieces, there's, um, I had just finished the last piece a few days ago. They're all large scale, all 48 inches and up, which is unusual oh, wow. for me to only do large scale pieces for a collection or just for, you know, a certain event or a gallery or a location. So, when those come across, you will know we're working hard behind the scenes to to get them where they're supposed to go. But um, it's going to be so cool. I'm so excited. Um, I have not put this much work into a single piece or a collection ever. Um, I, I started working on this in uh, November oh, and wow. I'm finally finishing. And so uh, there's not that many pieces. There's seven. And so... Um, it's still a lot. It's a lot. Um, it was a lot of, you know, working on those, taking a break, moving to something else, going back. Um, but most people, you know, now that know me and you've known me for a while now too, is like when I have free time, I'm usually painting. And so I can usually crank out some paintings if I'm in the creative mode, but then there's weeks at a time that I am just done. I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I have no reset. creative outlet need a reset um that's usually when i travel or to take a break away from things because you know the moment when you want to paint but you, like you just can't and you sit down and start painting it's just as horrible and you're like oh my god it's what am i not doing working like, and you're it's fighting not working. with it why do and... i why do i paint like i'm so bad like you're knocking you're yourself like, this down. Is shit. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and there's been i mean there's been many moments and there's one last summer I actually posted about where I was, I posted because I knew people would resonate because I had been pretty quiet for about a month of new works, like nothing had come out. And oh. some people had asked like, hey, so like, what's okay? going on? Are you okay? Like, are you still painting? Like, what's, I'm interested in something. Are you, are you going to be releasing things soon so I can decide what I want? 
and I basically posted this this picture on Instagram, and it was um, of a stark wall with all the canvases turned the other way, so you can see the brackets, all the braces of the the wood, and it was all these paintings that I had started and just couldn't finish for just had to wipe my hands and say, "There's there's nothing here," and I just kind of expressed my frustration and kind of you know sadness at the time of like i put all i can into these paintings i can't do it right now i gotta take a step back i'll be back and it was so interesting how many people connected with that as artists people were commenting and messaging me like i'm in the same position i had that last month like keep your head up he'll come back like it was too, it was too funny to see, you know, the support, but also the you know, people just completely relating to that situation. And so that, you know, as an artist helps me say, okay, I'm not alone. This is normal. I'm kind of getting burnt out. I need to step away and take a reset and then come back. And I did, and I came back and finished all the paintings, moved on, everything was fine. But you know, the moment you kind of do have like a doomsday scenario. Yeah, the, oh, woe is me. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. You think I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> you are not alone. And like, you know, the fact that you have the time and the ability to, to, to paint, like I've been working on this piece behind me for, and it's a whole, I'm like diving into a whole experimental thing. Like if this piece doesn't turn out, I'm okay with that because I'm using a different method. It's not just painting. I'm yeah. stitching on it. I'm crumpling up canvas. Like, it's a hundred percent experimental and it's just like ugh, sometimes i just want to whip out a, like a painting so it's like i might have to put this aside for a second put up a big canvas and just you know do get that mo movement and stuff that i'm used yeah. to to get the energy to come back to this piece i 100 percent agree <laughs> i do it all the time and um there will often be like someone who wants a commission of a certain color palette, but I'm just not feeling it right now. So I'll move on to something else to be able to paint their piece. And it, some people just don't get that. They're like, well, I was next. And I was like, I know, but I just, I, <laughs> I need to wait right now. I promise your pieces will be good, but I just cannot finish it at this moment. And um, through time, people have kind of better understood the artistic process that are unfamiliar with it. But there's, you know, to your point, there's a lot of times where you want to paint, you have an idea, so you step away from something you're working on, do that, and then come back. <laughs> yeah. And what people like for, because I did that, I had a commission that I was working on. If you are not in the mood or if you aren't feeling it and you force it, it comes uh, across and it's not a disaster. good end result. Like, you don't like, yeah. I had this, it was four, five feet by four feet. And, you know, I have a lot of, I always have to have a photo of, you know, something to start from. And it was a very yeah. specific, like uh, an extension of my collection. And it was actual, like they wanted to be the model. So I went over and I photographed them. And um, then I had like all these photos to choose from. Well, initially I had taken a photo of them and I was trying to force this one photo I was like and I tried and I tried and I tried and I how many times I had to put white paint over it and I was yeah. like it's not the painting it's the photo it's the thing so it's just like I had to scrap that after a couple months like I think it took me almost seven months to get these people these paintings also I became pregnant and like I got really sick so I was like that also was part of it. Yeah. <laughs> minor <laughs> details but yeah, it's just like, if you try to force something, the end result is not going to be yeah, good. I completely agree. And every single artist in the world will agree with you on that one. Um, there's, there was a painting I started for Odyssey, the coming collection that, um, I thought was great. I was in the moment I was painting and then I tried to force finish it one night and I had to start over and I had to just undo <sighs> everything because it was just, you know, when you paint, you go yes. too long and you paint too much and you're just like, it's not, I don't like it anymore. So ironically, the first piece that I started was the last piece I finished. Oh, I do that too. <laughs> and so that one piece took like four months. It was crazy. I totally know that moment. You're like, or that's why sometimes like, and you probably do too is like i'll leave them up on the wall and i'll leave the door open to the studio so that if like a walk by it i'll like 
pop my head in, look at it. I was like, oh, am I ready? Yeah. And then like, you see it different angles, different times of the day. And like, you'll be like, oh, I know what to do now. When you finally get that point and you're like, yeah. I know wh where paint needs to be. I know what color it is. Like you totally like, yes. But yeah, if you try and force, you know, force yeah, it, you, you can't, it you always end up ruining probably. all your favorite spots that you had. And which is weird to say, like, you know, there's always a painting where you're like, I love this one section how this these one over area. <laughs> this one yeah. little small two by two area <laughs> yeah exactly and that's and i ruined it i had to start over so that's not lost that that thing i liked is gone but the, at least the whole product as a whole is something i think there's in i'm sure the same way i get ideas through the day so i just like make little notes on my phone and i come back to them like what do i what did i mean by it beige block with white like what did i mean by that and so some of them are lost some of them translate into actual work but um you know it's 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 all a process it, it comes and goes constantly yeah i i have a very long notes section in my phone because oh, i do a lot the, the writer in me the writer comes first before the painter uh -huh. for me and so it's like i have all of these really long like notes or names or titles of things and or like quotes or like if I'm out and about and I hear someone say something like I'll go back and I'll read it and I'm like what? and it could be like a year or two and I'm like the heck was going on there like yeah. or like I come across or or if I know like oh my god I know I wrote this idea down and I'm like scrolling through like where was that name like it was a solid name and it was like a note yeah. that I woke up in the middle of the night and like put out there and then I'm like literally my notes go back so far and that's along in between all my either to-do list or my grocery shopping list <laughs> yeah of course <laughs> so when can we know more about odyssey hopefully when will you be able to go here it is yes hopefully um my goal is by the middle of march um i think by april uh we will within two weeks i can i can say something so um, is so it you are waiting to say something or wherever you're showing is having you wait? It's, it's, there you go. There's there's many people involved. Everyone, everyone is excited. Everyone's excited, but there's a few logistics that have to be put in place and um those are those are pending. Um Darn so, contracts. I know. But everything <laughs> looks great. Um everything's agreed to, but it's um you know a matter of getting things where they need to go and then we can formally move forward so um hopefully there will be a positive reaction to everything i but as i said earlier i love all the pieces they're um they all are very cohesive telling you know a story on their own so excited for everyone to see it oh, the anticipation is building and i'm <laughs> like i like surprises but i'm also not a patient person i know it's, me neither it's, it's, but it's yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I like to tease everyone. <laughs> and I'm like, something's coming, but I'm not going to tell you everything. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so the gallery, what's the gallery again in Austin where your work intention is at? Uh, yeah, Adam's Galleries in Adam's Austin. Adam's Gallery, okay. So, every, and how long will it be there? Um, I mean, indefinitely. So, okay. essentially until it sells. So. You know, it, it may pop into a few fairs or shows in Austin okay. via the gallery. Um, but if, you know, if anyone's in Austin wants to go, um, you know, let me know or to stop by the gallery on announce, they'll be happy to have you. Um, but then everything is also available online. It can be shipped anywhere. So it's uh, obviously not as great to see it in person, but the galleries, um, you know, been you know, through time, they can share videos and whatever to, you know, help people, you know, visualize it in their space. There's a lot of cool things we can do now. Yes. Thank goodness to technology for that aspect, you know? Yes. yes. Um, all right. So everyone, you can find Michael's work in Austin currently at the Adams Gallery. It's there indefinitely. So if you are in Austin, which, you know, South by Southwest is coming up. There's a lot of so there's so many things that happen in Austin in general. So if you're in that area, you're going to be coming in from out of state for South by Southwest. 
stop in the Adams Gallery to see Michael's work. And obviously, I will include all the information in the show notes here and his website, his Instagram, where he likes to tease us and not give <laughs> us everything. And then if you do follow him, then you'll also be able to be part of this big, exciting announcement that is coming. Yes. So thank you so much, Michael, for being on today's episode of The Artist Stoop. And I had a pleasure talking to you. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Thanks, Jillian. I think it was a great conversation. Yeah. So excited for everyone to listen. Yeah. So thank you, everyone. And you'll be able to either listen or watch on YouTube. <laughs> And that, my friends, wraps up another colorful episode of The Artist Stoop. A huge thank you to our incredible guests for sharing their art and stories. If you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on the next Stoop chat. And don't forget to spread the love. Share your favorite episodes with fellow art enthusiasts, and let's build this community together. Connect with us on social media at Jayguze Studio and Jillian Zapata Art for behind the scene peeks, artist spotlights, and a sneak peek at my own art. Until next time, stay inspired, stay curious, and keep that creative fire burning. This is Jillian Zapata signing off from the artist stoop. And remember, the world is your canvas, so paint it vividly. Mm-hmm.